Hello and welcome, this is Silverox, and on today's episode we are going to be making the Watchdog 2 Wrenches Mask. Now this was a request made on my YouTube comments, and I have decided to make this one a free submission. So if you want to get theirs, and even if you want to get other bronze projects I have done, then go to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash silverboxcrafts. With only a $2 subscription, you are able to get every other project I have done in the past. Also, remember to leave a comment, rating and subscribing to my channel. It helps out a lot. Thank you and enjoy the video. Well, with the introduction out of the way, let's get right to this. This was obviously one of... Uh, a YouTube request, uh, I, at least I got it through YouTube, for Watch Dogs 2 Wrenches Mask. All of these pictures are there merely for video purposes, usually they will be either orientated to face my model or they would just be outside as a reference for me, but so I don't have to keep exiting entering Blender again, I'm setting these up inside Blender itself. So to start, let's check some of our references to know what we are going to do. Obviously, I, did, I already checked this before time, so I was just going to explain it. There's going to be three main parts to this build. The first one is going to be the, the spiked mask at the front. This is going to be a separate piece that's going to attach to this outline that's on its own going to attach to the goggles. The goggles are going to compress several pieces, as are the front, but those are, be, are going to be done independently. So, let's start. Cursor selected. And a new mesh. And just make a cube, it doesn't matter. Let's set it up so it's the, the ma center mass point is there where you want it to be. Uh, going into edit mode and deleting everything. And turning on magnet mode. This will allow us all this to face. Will allow us to create anything and it automatically attaches to any mesh that we are working with. So let's delete this. I know for a fact that the I don't know what the the face mask part is going to go uh, right above the nose is going to be something like this and then it's going to go almost straight down to the shin so that's what we are going to work with, so deleting those just adding these two points and I'm going to now add a mirror modifier to this select everything make sure the clipping is on and then they should uh, mesh together I'm going to turn off magnet for the time being because that misses me, yeah, there you go, it's attached now. I need to make it this part completely detached from the face. And only the goggles and this part are going to actually be magnet. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use a magnet to attach to the face, but the front part I actually need to be separate, separated. So with that, let's just round this up just slightly. And that's pretty much what the face mask is going to start with. Going into this view. I'm actually going to cut it out here. Turning off clipping and I'm just going to work in the front plane. At the moment if you see this, it's just flat and this is going to be no, need to come back. So I'm just doing this for a moment, time being. This is actually supposed to be slightly sharper. Now just aligning this so that make a, a smooth curve towards the face itself. Yeah, just like this. And now, turning on magnet mode, I'm just going to be finishing the contours that go alongside the side of the cheeks. So 
So this is going to be a straight line and then going to be straight down to the bottom of the jaw. So straight line towards here and then through the jaw, through the cheek ones, it's just going to be straight down to the jaw. Once again, turning off magnet and turning on clipping and just unite these two vertices. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything again and I'm actually going to pull to away from the face and deselecting this I'm going to pull this to the bottom just like this. This is so that I have some material to work with now as you can see the face itself there's this ridge through the middle now usually that while doing that on a paper model it actually is a bit troublesome to achieve because you are going to be making a lot of small faces so to avoid that I am actually going to make the, the front uh, the mouth plate out of two different pieces so go into side view I'm just going to be adjusting these there we go what this means now as you can see there the you can see the other side okay like like this you actually can these are now going to have this where the two different pieces are going to glue together now what happens when you do that with paper is usually these corners tend to end up not as sharp as you think they will so the the re ridge right in the middle we will actually be able to see that very clearly so now i have to finish orientating this so it actually looks decent and from here i'm just going to have to close the front of the face mask Now with that, the face plate, face plate is uh, almost done. What we now need to do is pretty much just hide everything beside the face plate because now we are going to need to fix a lot of these small things so that it actually looks like it should flow properly. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, what do you call uh, Ridge, uh, ridges and Peter, let me just fix the faces right there. Uh, when I started, there was uh, a point here where it was forming this part right here. I don't like it. I had to fix this one as well just to make it flow properly, making sure, of course, that you don't mess other parts while do you're doing this. And with this, let's just I have the, mi the mirror, we don't need it for now and what I'm going to do is actually create the support structure that's going to help this keep its, its shape so it's just creating an edge all around your model that's, just, that's simple enough making sure of course that it the doesn't uh, interfere with uh, the, the model's face because if this goes inside the model that's probably something you shouldn't have right there 
So let's once again hide everything but what are we working with? Obviously this is going to add an extra level of complexity to the model but that's something I'm comfortably comfort with, comfortable with. This shouldn't be something uh, incredibly hard to achieve. So there we go. This is the finished faceplate. So now we are going to go into the goggles. Now the goggles is where we are going to use the majority of the magnet function of Blender. So again, so press magnet button. I have an overlay on the background of the mask itself. It's not completely accurate because of the 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 way it's designed. So it's just a reference pictures. So I'm going to control and press on the face, making sure that nothing is selected. So press a few times until everything is selected. Control and left click, and that places a vertex there. Now I'm going to use that vertex to follow the contours of the goggle, and obviously freestyle it myself a bit. I'm not going to be adding any depth to it just yet. For now, this is just as a reference to what I'm going to need to do. So this merges, this merges. There we go. Control L, and we have the shape of our goggles. I also turned off the magnet mode so I can work this way. So from here, we are going to need to add some thickness, so enlarge it just slightly, press E to extrude and then scale it down, and this is what we get. Obviously this is not what we're going to work with, so we are going to need to reorientate some of these, making a model is a very serious process, and you are actually getting the shorter version of this. Every thing I actually I don't want or don't need I add either speed up or just cut out so you don't have to see it. So anytime I made a mistake, well you just won't be able to see that. It's simple as that. Not something you need to worry too much about. All you need to do is enjoy the video and rate it. So right here I am actually going to be manually orientating some of these. Obviously, since we have the mirror more on, all the changes we make to one side will be mirror on the other, simple as that. So I'm going to select all of these, making sure that all of this, this entire line of faces is selected, press E, making sure the clipping is on, press immediately enter that way, they are both in the same place and now we are going to go into the Y axis and extrude it forward. Once you check this, check it against our original one, and we see that this is actually too big, so simple. Oops, so make sure that press Z to select everything, or turn on uh, X ray mode right here. But let's leave it as it is. This is going to be much shorter, so I'm going to delete these vertices, which is going to break the line, but that's not a problem. Usually this will all be done off screen and you wouldn't be able to see, but for today I'll make an exception. So here, space, bridge, and there we go. Shake it from a distance and it looks fine. Now what I'm going to do is fix this so that there is enough space between the the, the the front mask, the front, I forgot the name of this part, the face cover and the goggles, so they actually, the goggles can't go uh, in front of the mask, as you can see here, they'll actually make a somewhat decent line to, uh, line between the two, so I actually gotta pull this entire face line f uh, backwards, just enough, and that didn't work because I altered the shape of this earlier, 
and now I'm going to need to alter it again. Like I said, usually you wouldn't be able to see this, but today is a, dif is a different one. I should have said this on the beginning of the video itself, but this is actually going to be a free submission. You won't need to be one of my Patreon supporters, though that is encourageable as many of my models are patron only. So go there. If you're not a patron yet, make yourself one. And if you are, well, this one is for free, so enjoy it as anyway. So what I'm going to do, making sure that only this is selected, I am actually going to delete, come on, delete the back faces and fix the, the faces, the face orientation. I did this so that this is actually, while well, you are building this, you won't actually be able to see the inside that's going to be pressed against your face. So I'm just simplifying the design for you. Now what we are going to do here is select this line right here. I have all of this since we're not going to need it. Select this line right here, duplicate it. Oh, I forgot to tell I duplicated the first one. Control L, select this one, and hide it. And these two are now going to merge together. And what is going to happen now is going to create a surface between these two lines, which is going to indicate this space right here. So to start off, I'm going to add this right here, and this right here. This is going to be because these two faces are actually going to merge together like this for the most part. Let me just fix that. For the most part, it seems like I don't need to apply too many vertices, sorry, not face vertices, to fix this. And there we go. Delete this as we don't not face vertices. We don't need this. Bring everything back. And now you can see there that the joint is going to be keeping the two together. That joint of this is not going to be enough. As you can see on the model, the in-game model, there's actually a side piece to that, which is actually going to follow the face. So going back in, we are actually going to be duplicating this edge right here. So Control D, just move it slightly off. Control L, making sure that at least one of the vertices from this is selected. Alt H. I'm going to delete this vertex and close these, and there we go. Now this is going to be the final piece. As if, if you remember at the beginning, I said there will be three main pieces. Obviously one is the face mask, the second the goggles, and the third is a support piece between the two. So now I'm going to bring my model back, and now actually keep everything in place because I'm actually going to need to mess with the face masks just slightly because what I want to do is create since uh, in the, I don't I don't actually have watchdogs so I'm only working from reference pictures in the model itself you don't actually see how much of the the sheets are, are covered so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, let me just put it in side view so you can see, see this better. This is pretty much what I'm going to be doing. It's just uh, the line itself is going to go from about this part right here and it's going to merge into this line. So this actually needs to be... There we go. Making sure that the this line is going to be almost a continuation of the one from the support piece. So obviously this is going to go as I, maybe now, you know what, I'm going to actually use this. Just making sure to follow, it's following the, the side profile. There we go. This is another point to fix right here. You don't want uh, these uh, art corners. You want it to be as smooth as possible. And this should be about it. There we go. 
of this fee. Fix this, fix this. Go back here, fix this. Make it as smooth as possible. And now from here, just fill in all the faces. Fixing all the orientations. Uh, and this should be about it. So from the top, aligning everything and making this final extrusion is what is going to be making sure that I don't mess it up. There we go. This is usually what I do off screen, a lot of this. And there we go. But, you know, better idea would be to duplicate this one. Yeah, that's actually much, much easier. Fix that face. Fix this face. There we go. All faces are not properly orient orientated. You see this because they are overlapping, so we are going to fix that as well by pulling it to the outside. And there we go. The mask itself is pretty much done. So all I'm going to be needing to do is create the support ridges, like the ones on the inside, and the fa the one second I forget the name of this the faceplate mask the faceplate mask the faceplate spikes. Obviously, there's one extra step I want to do is you can see there's a bevel around the entire thing, the support part. So I'm actually going to be extruding these spaces forward and adding a bevel to them after the support pieces. With that down, you can now see that it, it actually adds a lot more detail. It also makes it uh, considerably harder to make now, but I, I accept that. Obviously, some mistakes are going to be made right here, for example. Things we don't want to keep. Yeah, I'm going to have to fix this, so a moment now. This should be about it. After some fixing, i pretty much going to leave it as it is. Now moving to the final step, which is decorative pieces. Now as you can see, the background image I have is going to showing me the, the overlay of the spikes, so I'm going to have to make the spikes now. That is going to be a separate mesh on its own, because I don't have to apply the mirror to it, because it's selected of course. There we go. And I am going to be using this square square face. I'm going to be making it about the size of the spikes. And this is actually what my spikes are going to be. Merge them all at the center. And we are left with this little triangle. So pyramid. And now I'm going to be adding this around the mesh itself in all of these markers. So speeding this up, of course.
browser is done you can see all these spikes are in place they are not exactly the same the, so it uh, is actually much easier to glue them on once you are you have printed this as it is to actually make each individual one in the in blender but with that done all uh, we need to do now is finish the the goggles the goggles all they are missing is the mesh that's supposed to be inside of glass now i'm not going to be making this one is exactly what i'm going to be making and i'm going to show it right now let me just duplicate this shift h i'm going to be adding a cut in the middle here and deleting deleting everything but the cut that i just made and i'm now actually going to be merging this now what this is going to do is this is going to create a template now this template you can just lay it on a pretty much on any surface whatsoever and give it a piece of plastic and use it to cut the details the details sorry the mesh that you are going to need so this is not supposed to be used as a final uh, final part for the the face the mask but it is meant to be used as a template so with that everything is done so all we need to do is export this as the obj file so i'll see you there we are now here after having exported the obj file in opening in papakura i'm going to actually unfold it and I've been testing and I know for, for someone who is going to be 1.8 meters tall, which is about my height, this mask is going to have the width of 16 centimeters and the depth of 10 centimeters. So there you go. This is unfolded. This is it before me organizing it. So I'll be fixing that up. And we are going to be wrapping this up with making the PDF files.
We done folded now there's only one more thing left to do and that is to print it but before we print it I'm gonna click show edge ID so that you have an orientation of what parts go where and I'm going to be printing with Qt PDF Writer which is just going to emulate a printer but instead of printing it, it's going to create a PDF file of course and that is it that is the very simple process of going from a 3D model of a render all the way to a Prepacarf model I hope you enjoyed this, thank you and I expect you to be here the next time, goodbye